A big concern for supply chain professionals right now should be how to strategically deal with the demand latency, which is the time elapsed between items leaving a retailer's shelves to the time the producer of that item receives an order to replenish the retailer. As panic buying more than needed wipes out certain things from the shelves, such as toilet papers or paper towels, demand latency creates shortages in the system. How does that impact us, the customers? Well, we start seeing empty shelves. So does that mean we have a lack of paper towels like we see here in this image I took from Sam's Club in Morgantown? Not really. The shelves are empty because of the sudden increase in demand due to panic buying exhausting the supply available at the retailer. Still, the replenishment signal from the retailer to the manufacturers in the form of order, orders uh, takes a little time. Inventories in general are, are available. Manufacturers of consumer goods typically have several days worth of stock available at their distribution centers. What we will eventually see is an abundance of items sitting at retailers, as the actual demand for, uh, say, toilet papers had, had not, have not increased. We will not use more toilet papers, uh, toilet paper than before. Consumers have just stocked up months worth of inventory at home. So what does it mean for consumers? Supply chains have become smarter and more resilient over the years and they will adapt to the ongoing shift in demand, so they should not panic. We are not experiencing a food shortage at this time. Items that will likely impose some changes on our behavior for the time being um, are the specialty items uh, such as imported spices and uh, certain types of fruits and vegetables coming from abroad. We may not have access to our favorite brands or kinds of fruits, for instance. Uh, on the first day of class, I typically stop by a local retailer across my, uh, where I live and pick up a miniature pineapple, which is grown exclusively in South Africa, about 8,000 miles away. And I bring it to one of my graduate classes. Then I engage them in a discussion about the role of global supply chains in our modern lifestyle. I'm able to cross the street and grab a miniature pineapple produced thousands of miles away, conveniently and at an affordable price. This possibility is quite frankly uh, almost short of a little miracle. But such convenience comes at a cost, and we can experience some of its aspects now during the COVID-19 pandemic. For instance, retailers source quite a significant volume of items from China, which production has, uh, was affected due to factory shutdowns after their Lunar New Year back in February. While the factories seem to start coming back online now, it takes a while to move and transport the goods until they reach retailers and manufacturers here. So we will likely see additional manufacturing activity shutting down for a while. And this gives also an opportunity to rethink how we operate our chain of supplies. Now, back to panic buying. What does that mean for supply chain professionals? In the short run, uh, it's critical to increase visibility and coordination of the chain of supplies and uh, separate managerial action from using orders as the crucial source of demand. This insight is all the more critical the further upstream in the chain you find yourself. Smart supply chains have honed this ability over the last several years. But these capabilities take a whole new dimension now in the face of the current events. It is also critical that retailers, distributors, manufacturers, uh, the food system in general, take sev uh, severe and uh, concerted actions to care for a worker's health. They are among the essential personnel we need right now. In the long run, 
organizations must start reimagining the way they design and run their supply networks, building on innovations and emerging technologies. In essence, this is actually one of the primary focus of my current research. Now, I focused on panic buying. But customer behavior is certainly not the only factor as we continue navigating through these uncharted waters, which we don't know at this point how long will last. The pressure um, on replenishment and delivery frequency will become increasingly more challenging the more protracted the COVID-19 crisis uh, lasts. Warehouse operations are labor-intensive environments. Transportation connects all the various links across supply chains. And we already have, uh, were facing truck driver shortage uh, before the new pandemic. We need people to put the products into the shelves at retailers. So we see that manufacturing, distribution, in-store personnel, they are essential. So again, protecting the workforce's health is crucial to maintain supply chain functioning. So let me conclude my thoughts with uh, three main points. For supply chain professionals and organizations, in the short run, an even sharper focus on actual demand and not orders and investment on the workforce's health are crucial. In the long term, as we emerge from this unique situation, the experience will constitute a terrific opportunity to rethink the operating model and start reimagining operations for future scenarios. And for customers, exercise responsible shopping. There is an abundance of food and most of the essential items in the system at this time, and our supply chains will adapt to distribution and delivery soon.